Hi, I'm Stephen Iverson, and I'd like to spend just a few minutes to talk with you about how, as a leader, you can communicate more effectively and save precious time in the process. I spoke to a business owner recently about time management communication, and I asked him to estimate what he thought on a weekly basis was the amount of time wasted in meetings, private conversations, in his office, hallway chats, things like that. He thought about it for a moment, and he said, Stephen, I think a conservative number would be about five to seven hours per week. And then when he realized what he said, he looked at me and exclaimed, holy cow, that's like almost 400 hours a year. I cannot afford that. <laughs> and you know what? You and I can't afford it either. So I want to give to you a simple outline that I believe busy leaders can use to get to the point and get better results. When you communicate and I communicate, we should do it with three filters in mind. Here they are. Clarity, brevity, and congruity. Let me break down each one for just a moment. Clarity. When you and I enter into a conversation, we need to begin the discussion right up front with a clear definition of the reason and the purpose of that discussion. We do it in such a way that it doesn't come across as dominating, but tactfully. And then we share the very best information that we have so that everyone who's involved can be on the same page. At the same time, we come better prepared to those discussions with factual, reasoned perspectives on what those issues are, not just our opinions. Now, I believe our opinions are important, but sometimes we don't bring to the table the most important information that we should. And we end up having the conversations two or three times because we have to inform people later of stuff that we've left out. Clarity also means that we need to come better prepared so that we're not wasting time with our pride or the past. Let me explain. I was working with a bank president not long ago about some communication issues, and I discovered that he was having weekly a four-hour senior management team meeting. One hour was necessary. Three hours was nothing but him reliving the past, the glory days of the bank, his experiences as he had gone through the trenches and, and rose to the president's office. And what he didn't realize was that he wasn't really helping to build credibility. He was simply wasting their time. And everything he was saying was stuff that they had already heard before. They just wanted to get back to work. So we need to get to the point. There is an enemy to clarity, and that enemy is interpretation. Not everything that we say has the same meaning to different people or even to different departments. So we've got to make sure that we're very clear about what we communicate. If somebody were to say to me, Stephen, I could have this project done for you in about a month. I'm wondering, what does that mean? About a month? 30 business days? 30 calendar days? Leaders speak with specific language as opposed to generalizations. And one of the best ways that you and I can get clarity is to practice the second filter, and that's brevity. Yeah, brevity. This is the practice of editing yourself. Now, leaders are always great at talking, but have a really hard time stopping. But the best leaders that I've observed that are really good at communicating, they are the ones who avoid the commas and respect the period. If what you're communicating in 10 sentences could be defined in one sentence, then stop at the first period that you come to. You know, the fascinating thing about Twitter is that it forces everyone to edit their thoughts and ideas into 140 characters or less, right? Leaders do this by concisely articulating in one or two sentences the essence of their thoughts. So edit yourself. And I wanna give you one other tip about brevity in team meetings have stand-up meetings. If you want to have a shorter meeting and encourage people to be prepared to take action, 
Just stand up as you have those meetings. It's fascinating the results you get from that. And finally, you get to the point when you filter your communication through congruity. Leaders make sure that the discussion that they are having is congruent with their highest priorities and the future. They don't get stuck in the trenches of talking about products and processes in the past. Oh, they do talk about those, but they always tie it into what those things are for. How does it tie into the purpose? Congruity is asking ourselves, is this subject aligned with our purposes and the vision that we have? And I think this is where great leaders begin to separate themselves from average leaders. They understand that they have an obligation to pay attention to business. And the right business decisions and the right communication happens when we are predisposed to thinking about what's the next action that needs to take place as a result of this discussion. Peter Drucker said, management is doing things right. Leadership is doing the right things. So congruity is filtering our communication through our highest priorities. And I believe that's how you and I begin to create a very clear sense of direction and we build confidence in our team because we are consistent and that's vital. Now, I do want you to know that when you use these filters in your discussions, it is possible for some people to get the wrong impression. They may see you as, as dominating or being aggressive because you're getting to the point. So be aware of your tone and your approach when you use these. Clarity, brevity, and congruity are not aggressive manners. They are simply assertive techniques for you to save time and to stay focused. And believe me, if you're rambling on in a conversation, your listeners are rolling their eyes and whispering to themselves, can't you just please get to the point? Hey, I'm Steven Iverson. Thanks for taking just a few minutes with me. I'm looking forward to talking to you again sometime.